Torres Tiger Nation, Martin Chuck here. Welcome to another episode of instructional stuff just to get you thinking, maybe help you with your game. So we just finished up a golf school last weekend and the folks that come to see me typically struggle with behavior where the golf club gets too steep and on the way down when it's really steep like this it wants to crash into the ground and you'd think these people take divots but typically they don't take divots. Why don't they take divots? Well, they don't take divots because when the club gets really steep, you train your body how to respond by either standing up prematurely or separating your elbows so that you change the radius of your golf swing. When the club's crashing down, you'll separate your elbows to soften that rate, well, to shorten that radius so the club doesn't crash into the ground. So it's interesting. You know, I've got a lot of technology here at the, at the, at Tourist Trigger Golf Academy here at the Raven. And we'll take a look on gears here in a minute my indoor um, 3D motion analysis software that, and it shows how good players their wrist condition goes into what I call a negative mode so at a dress every good player tends to have their lead wrist flexed back there's a little bit of a bend back in the wrist right here well we don't hit it with that bend the club goes into a condition of sort of being flat flattish so on the way back that bend seems to go dissipate and tends to go flat or even even mildly bowed. Okay, so flat is zero and cuppy is positive. The good players tend to get back to zero or even get on the negative side bowed. And you could say just uh, Dustin Johnson's like this, Jordan Spieth, a bunch of good players play from this kind of bowed condition. Where most of the people that struggle, what happens with them is they don't have this bowed condition at a critical point in their, in their downswing. Typically, they get into this cuppy position, and you can see what this does to the golf club. This is a place, if I come down from here, I'm steep into the ground, I have to separate my elbows or stand up. If the club is in a flat position or even a negative bowed position, now this golf club wants to come to the inside. It's going to inspire me to need and want to stay down a little bit longer on the golf ball. A simple thought for you. If the lead wrist gets bowed, the trail wrist gets flexed and that gets cupped. So if I was going to take this football and throw it at the camera, I would transport my arm, I'd transport this bent wrist, and I could throw that in a condition where I transport it long enough before that football came away. Well, in the golf swing, it's the same way. So at address, my right wrist is fairly flat. And as I build up momentum and energy in my swing, it goes into a bent condition, and then I'm transporting that. And I'm transporting that flattish or even mildly bowed lead wrist. And don't think I hold on to that, because I don't. Because I want that momentum in that club head to overtake and to finish in style and balance in a nice tall finish. So the conditions of the golf swing. Let's take a quick look on gears, get you thinking about this, and maybe this will help you with your game. So here we've got two high-level pros. You've got Ricky Fowler in blue. You've got Ian Poulter in yellow, both hitting mid-irons. And if we go through this, I'm going to move Ian Poulter first. And I want you to focus on, so here he goes in his backswing. And then I'm going to take you to a number here that shows left wrist. I'm highlighting left wrist. It's 25 degrees. It means it is bent back. It is cupped. It is cupped, it is cupped, it is cupped, and now it's starting to flatten. So in his backswing right about there, that is going flat, going close to zero. So, and he's cupping, he's cupping his left wrist at the top, but take a look and see where it starts to go negative. That left wrist of his is now bowed. So while he approaches the golf ball, you see that soft, that, that cup, I'm sorry, the bowed look in the back of his left wrist, and that stays in that position into impact, it stays kind of negative. Now he, Ricky Fowler is a little bit different. Let's go ahead and take a look at Ricky. Now we'll focus on Ricky here and we'll look at his numbers. His numbers are up over here and we're looking particularly at his lead wrist, his left wrist. So what's happening with Ricky now, as we go back, his lead wrist goes into a bend. It's cupping back a little bit, it's starting to flatten. And now it's gonna go Stay cuppy, stay cuppy, stay cuppy, increasing some cup. And then on the way down, you can see it flattens out right there. It goes to flat and then starts to go bowed, 
just, just like Ian Poulter. If I zoom in here and we get him down the line, there's that little bowed look that we get. That's that negative number that I'm hovering my pointer at. And then as he comes down into impact, as we kind of take him back this out a bit and face on him a little bit, you can see that he starts to lose that a little. So there's still plenty of forward shaft lean, so no problem there. But he goes into, he loses that bowed condition and it starts to really release and go through into a very positive condition. And the same thing happens post impact with Poulter. Poulter just happens to carry the bowed condition into impact. And then you can see that he starts to go positive as well. So Tour Striker Nation, to summarize this, you know, when I address a golf, when I hold a golf club and I'm in the address position, my trail wrist is pretty flat. Now you wouldn't throw a football very far from there. You, you know, if I was going to zip one into my net here, I'd take my trail wrist, I'd bend it backwards. Well, guess what that's also doing to my lead wrist? It's bowing it or flattening it a little bit. And then I would transport this angle and throw it into the net. Well, I showed you on gears how these players, these excellent players and Fowler and Poulter, you know, they had some positive wrist condition at a dress, meaning that their lead wrist was cupped back. During their backswing, that stayed fairly positive, fairly flattish to positive. And on the way down at some point, that wrist went into that subtle bowed condition. Well, I've got the educator in here because if you own one, thank you. And this is a simple way for you to feel. You take the cap off so that you can push the post in the, in the shaft. And on the way down, you want to feel as though you can rotate the educator within the shaft, getting you in that negative position of the great players, that Bowie lead wrist, so you can lean the shaft and it inspires you to strike inside out and keep your attitude to the ground as you work through the strike. So Tour Striker Nation, this was a bit technical this week, but I ho hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, reach out, martin at tourstriker.com. Take care.